Hey, John here. Yesterday we wrote the basic skeleton of a program, just enough to get the app to launch. Um, today we're going to actually start getting into our programming. And we're going to start with what seems like a diversion. I'm going to write a layout for Kibi. Let me launch that program and I'll show you why I need to write that layout. Okay, there's my app. Um, here's the thing, that's a 16 by 9 image that I have, but yet it's all stretched because it's showing a 4 by 3 screen. The truth is, when it comes down to it, I don't control the environment in which my apps can be running. Is it running on a tiny little phone? Is it on a big tablet? What's the shape? Is it 4 by 3, 16 by 9? What is it? Uh, I don't know. And so in order to make my experience consistent, I will do what a lot of games do, which is they actually force the environment that I'm working in at a fixed ratio. And I'm going to make it to where it also acts as if the image screen is always 1920 by 1080 no matter what. Um, now in practice it'll be at different resolutions. If the screen in, is 480p that it's going to, it'll show with the lower resolution. If it's a higher resolution, it'll scale. Um, and to do that, in fact, I'm going to be inheriting from a class called Scatter Layout that already comes with Kivi, and I'm just going to be adding a few tweaks into it to make it work. All right, I'm going to make a new uh, Python profile called uh, Fixed Layout .py, <clears throat> and in there, I'm going to write my new layout class. All right, I've written it and I've essentially I've flushed out the framework for this. I got a class called fixed layout which will inherit from scatter layout and that's I imported that from Kivi. I'm just doing this first step as a proof of concept to make sure nothing breaks as I try to create my own fixed layout. So in the main app let's go ahead and uh, from fixed layout import fixed layout all right and then let's go to the kv file and switch to fixed layout we really shouldn't see anything change i just want to make sure that Everything's connected to everything else in the right way. <laughs> Nothing breaks. It worked. Okay, let's flush this thing out. Kibi uh, classes have something called a, uh, they have their own property system. And it's very similar to a classful property in Python already, except that it, has, it adds all kinds of event connections so that you can detect when the property changes or uh, various events that occur around those variables and it can import from the .kv file which is very cool. So we're going to actually uh, create a uh, parameter for this class or a property for this class called screen size which will be the idealized size. So screen size equals object property and we'll give it a default I'm going to do 1920.1080, which is standard high definition video. All right, I'm writing a, a new function called fit to window, which is going to attempt to uh, scale the scatter layout so that it always fits just perfectly. And it'll create either black bars on the sides or on the top. And then later on, I'm going to make it also so it can handle rotation so that if the person has the phone or a device held portrait, it'll rotate the device into the correct position. In theory, you could also have that handled by the software that creates the APKs and the, uh, the actual generators for the iOS app because it handles portrait versus landscape in that part of the system as well. But to be paranoid, I'm going to go ahead and make it to where my layout can handle it as well. Okay, I'm calculating the screen ratio as well as the window ratio. That's the, 
the part I can't control, which is window ratio, which means I need to get the actual size of the screen in pixels. Um, to do that, I need to import a class supported by QV called window. Okay, and now we're going to bind the routine I just wrote to the system size event. I don't know that in a production system I need to do that. Although I guess in a, um, in a desktop environment where the user can resize the windows, you would need to support that. In a mobile environment, probably not. There we go. It's clearly wrong, but it's scaling. Let me mess with it a bit. Ah, just dawned on my what I did. <clears throat> my scaling math is actually correct, I suspect. I think I've got the wrong stuff. That there it is. I've got the wrong stuff in uh in here. The KV file. KV file, or whatever you want to call it. So this is 1920 by 1080. Ah, kick myself that's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. Now it's the right size. And as I shrink, that shrinks. As I get bigger, that gets bigger. Clearly, it's in the wrong spot. I'm going to have to recenter the window. I need to know what its initial thinking of what center is, and I can only vaguely understand why that is, but I store the initial difference between the screen size and the X and Y uh, directions, and then I use that for later in order to handle um, figuring out where the true left and bottom of the image is. In other words, it's figuring out the size of the, uh, the bars essentially on the side and using that information I can then take the true window size at the moment and remove the bar lengths in order to find out where the center is. I think I've got that right. <laughs> well actually visually it looks like I have it right. Let's uh, let's actually play around with it a bit. Uh, so okay it's keeping it in the correct position um, and it should be let's see if it does it Right now I got black bars on the top and bottom because I have a more squarish shape. And as it get longer, let's stretch it from the other side here, it should go the other way and create black bars on the left and right. There we go. So black bars on the left and right. And as I squish in more black bars on the top and bottom until I hit, well, right now it just keeps on going. <laughs> What I need to do now is add support for rotation so that when I go, when I'm at the square, I'm at the middle point. But once I go uh, more portrait shaped, I need to flip the image some. So I'm going to flip it by 90 or negative 90 degrees, I think. And uh, I'll be right back. I got some math to do. <laughs> Okay, I have it where it's just checking the window ratio. If it's greater than one, it does fit the landscape window. And if it's less than one, it fits it to a portrait window. Um, I probably could make the same routine, figure out portrait versus landscape. But wow, that's a, I'm be blunt, I'm doing this the lazy way because I'd have to wrap my head around a lot of different weird math border cases to do that. So I'm going to make them, <laughs> make them separate routines. Let me write the portrait version of this. Okay, let's do an interim test before I start monkeying with all the portrait window settings. Let's make sure it in fact does flip. Um, here at the fit to the landscape window function, I have it self rotation equals zero, otherwise self rotation equals 90, a uh, negative 90. So I will rotate it this way, I think. I'll find out. <laughs> let's run it. Okay. 
In landscape mode, all is okay. Square, square, getting to square, then should flip. There it is, it flipped. And I would say my scaling is wrong. It did flip though. <laughs> I got some tweaking to do. Allow me to tweak. Uh, throwing things off here is the, the screen size that I want, I have to treat backwards. In other words, I've got to flop the X and Y coordinates, but the window that I'm using, the, the raw window information I'm getting from the OS isn't flipped. So it's partly flipped and partly not flipped. And that <laughs> uh, Sometimes you just got to play with it till it works. I think I've got it. I'm going to call this uh, enough progress for today. Uh, it now allows me to have horizontal bars, vertical bars, no matter what size the screen is, and rotate to portrait. There we've got top and bottom bars and left and right bars. Look at that. All different sizes. Okay, if you like what you see, please subscribe. Thanks.